Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the synthesis of linkages by analytical method. We will particularly be examining the displacement equation method, otherwise known as the Frudenstein equation. To start, let us examine this hypothetical four bar linkage defined by the design parameters A1 for the input link, A2 for the coupler, and A3 for the output link, and A4 for the fixed link. This is a four bar linkage, and of course, for a four bar linkage, um, we know that it has one degree of freedom. So in which case we could specify just the input angle, which is phi, or the output angle, which is psi. On their own, they are both sufficient to adequately define and specify this four bar linkage. However, for the sake of our mathematical derivation, we are going to visualize the two angles. Now, the displacement equation requires us to specify points A and B with respect to the fixed reference frame, okay, which is XY, and with the origin at point OA. So for point A, defined in, in space by the coordinates x2, y2, we have x2 to be equal to a1 cos phi. a1 cos phi gives us x2. And y2 equal to a1 sine phi. That gives us this. Similarly, for point B, define in space by x3, y3, we obtain x3 to be equal to minus a4 plus a3 cos psi. Can you take a moment to try and figure out how that is obtained? Yes, yes, exactly. And that is because we have um, a point B to the negative of the origin OA. So A4 is the length of this link. And remember that this link Okay, is connected to the to the fixed link at this point. So this is negative minus four to, to the negative um, of the origin, and we have a three cos psi. Okay, to the positive. So we have minus a three plus minus a four rather plus a three cos psi. Then y is obtained similarly and that is a3 sine psi now take note of this this symbol here is a greek letter pronounced phi and spelled p h i this symbol here is another greek letter pronounced psi spelled P S I. And so with this point already established, we now move on. Now the displacement equation requires us to complete this into a right angled triangle. And in which case we can apply the Pythagoras theorem. And the theorem states that the sum of the squares of the adjacent sides of the right angle triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And so we have that this side, which is now x2 minus x3 squared plus y2 minus y3 squared that gives us the square of this side 
So when we substitute for x2, x3, y2, y3, we obtain this expression. Take a moment to go through this. And upon expanding the brackets, we have this expression. can pause this video while you try to grasp this, these expressions. And so we can rearrange this expression and that gives us a1 squared which is common to the square of the cosine of phi and the square of the sine of phi plus a4 squared plus a3 squared which is also common to the square to of the cosine of psi and the square of the sine of psi plus 2a1 a4 cos phi minus 2a3 a4 cos psi minus this expression this term and that is equal to a2 squared now you will recall from your basic trigonometry that this for single angles this is equal to 1 and then for double angles we have this equal to this and of course you can identify this identi these identities from this expression this is 1 this is 1 and this expression in parentheses is cos phi minus psi and so when we put these into the expression these identities into the expression we obtain a1 squared plus a3 squared plus a4 squared plus 2a1 a4 cos phi minus 2a3 a4 cos psi minus 2a1 a3 cos phi minus psi that is equal to 2 equal to a2 squared this can be rearranged and when we do that we are going to have 2a1 a4 cos phi minus 2a3 a4 cos psi plus and we bring this term to the left hand side we're going to have all of these parameters in parentheses so which is a1 squared minus a2 squared plus a3 squared plus a4 squared and that is equal to taking this one to the right hand side we have 2a1 a3 cos phi minus psi and so when we divide both sides of this equation through by 2 a1 a3 we get that this one we cancel out this one so we are going to have just a4 over a3 cos phi minus this cancel out this and a3 cancel out a3 so we have a4 over a1 cos psi plus the whole of this like this term all over 2 a1 a3 and that is equal to cos into phi minus psi this is the expression and so we can set k1 to be equal to a4 over a3, k2 to be equal to a4 over a1, and k3 to be equal to this term. So when we set this into this, we get k1 cos phi minus k2 cos psi plus k3, and that is equal to cos phi minus psi. Viewers, this is the Frudenstein equation. Quite simply done. 
Now, we look at a scenario where you are given for three consecutive angular displacement of the crank, you have corresponding angular displacements for the follower. So for such a scenario, how do we obtain our design parameters, which is um, K1, K2, K3, which are the expressions of A1, A2, A3, and A4. To be able to solve that equation, we need three equations in phi and psi. And that is um, obtained from synthesizing the linkage to conform through a minimum of three accuracy points. So thus, for values of phi and psi corresponding to the three accuracy points, we get k1 cos phi1 minus k2 cos phi1 and psi1 plus k3 is equal to cos phi1 minus psi1. Similarly, k1 cos phi2 minus k2 cos psi2 plus k3 is equal to cos phi2 minus psi2. And again, k1 cos psi3 minus k2 and uh, phi3 rather minus k2 cos psi3 plus k3 is equal to cos psi uh, phi3 minus psi3. So we have our three equations. Remember, these angles could represent accuracy points for which we desire corresponding accuracy points for the follower. And for these specifications, we wish to estimate K1, K2, and K3. So with these three, three equations for the three unknowns, we are set to obtain our equation. Now, you can observe from that equation that K1, K2, and K3 are functions of design parameters. A1 over A4, A2 over A4, and A3 over A4. And again, K1, K2, K3 are independent of the input and output variables, that is the crank and follower angles. Now, these observations make it possible for the displacement equation to be generalized. Thus, for a general linkage of n design parameters with phi and psi as input and output variables, the displacement equation can be written as summation from i equal to 1 to n of ki, gi being functions of phi and psi, which will be equal to function f of phi and psi. So this is a more general representation of the Prudenstein equation. And so we have that for the system of equations, which we have already derived, 1, 2, 3, we can solve it by using several approaches. However, when we consider the availability of higher computing speed, we will use the approach of linear algebra. The first step in this approach is to represent the system of equations in the matrix notation, which is the matrix of A theta dot Km, that is equal to the matrix of theta. And thus, Km will be equal to the inverse of A theta dot the matrix of theta, where the matrix of A theta is equal to transformation matrix, Km is equal to the coefficient matrix, and theta is equal to the matrix of angular displacement. And so from the system of equations, we have 
a theta to be equal to cos phi 1 minus cos psi 1 1 cos psi 2 minus cos cos phi 2 minus cos psi 2 1 we have cos phi 3 minus cos psi 3 and 1 and then for the displacement matrix we have cos into bracket phi 1 minus psi 1 cos into bracket phi 2 minus psi 2 and cos into bracket phi 3 minus psi 3 and k is the coefficient matrix which is k1 and coefficient vector which is k1 k2 and k3 this is also a vector column vector so with this system of equations we have this expression and it is such that when you perform a dot product of this matrix and this column vector we have k1 cos phi 1 minus k2 cos phi 1 plus k3 equal to cos phi 1 minus psi 1 exactly as equation 1 and then we do the same for equation 2 and then for equation 3 and thus k1 is equal to this gentlemen and ladies listening to this to this lecture this equation can be programmed easily using MATLAB that brings us to the end of this video tutorial the next video tutorial will be on how to use MATLAB to uh, program this equation now this is the MATLAB interface and as you can see my command window is clear my workspace is clear I'm not going to demonstrate how the Frudenstein equation is programmed using MATLAB I already have the script written and I'm going to just open it yes so this is the script here is already undocked so we have here synthesis of linkages and under it the Frudenstein's equation for over linkage it is good practice to always um, comment on your MATLAB script the first thing we do is to define variables now for this particular um, demonstration we have defined our variables as phi 1 to be equal to 0 degree phi 2 to be equal to 26.0 degrees and phi 3 to be equal to 52.0 degrees psi 1 to be equal to 0 degrees psi 2 to be equal to 29.4 degrees and psi 3 to be equal to 51.4 degrees after defining the variables the next thing to do is to now define our transformation matrix and of course we have seen it as a theta so a theta is actually a column vector now we have it as cos phi 1 minus cos psi 1 and 1 this is the first uh, transformation matrix rather it's not a column vector I'm sorry for that um, a theta is our transformation matrix and this is the first row of the matrix you see here I have um, added three dots this is to enable the continuation in the second line without writing everything on one line 
then we have the second entry the second row which is cos phi 2 cos psi 2 1 and the third entry as cos phi 3 minus cos psi 3 1 now observe that there is a D after our course and that is because by default MATLAB prints trigonometric values in radians and so we have to command it to print the results in degrees so you do that by adding D to cos or sine whatever the case may be now we have defined our a theta matrix the next thing that we need to define is the angular displacement matrix rather vector so which is theta and theta is a column vector so we have cos phi 1 minus psi 1 of course take note of our d cos phi 2 minus psi 2 then cos phi 3 minus psi 3 and again you will observe that we have suppressed all the assignments so far by using semicolon that is because we don't want MATLAB printing answers just to populate our workspace so this is also suppressed and next we define the coefficient um, vector again of matrix our coefficient vector is kn and that is the inverse of the transformation matrix and the theta multiplied by the by theta to do that we have the option of using the inverse command but that in itself will make the computation quite slow and so we are going to use a shortcut and the shortcut is just the backslash conventionally divide is forward slash but this implies that we are doing the inverse of this in other words we are using this expression to divide this not the other way around as suggested by this this expression signifies that theta is the denominator of a theta and what we want actually is that a theta is the denominator in this expression so the next thing that we do now is to index our k in other words assign k1 k2 and k3 having obtained this vector we want k1 to be equal to the first element of the km vector k2 to be equal to the second element of the km vector and k3 to be equal to the third element of the km vector and we want everything to be returned as a k column vector which is this so finally we want to obtain our parameters and to obtain our parameters of course you know from my expression uh, earlier on we said then uh, k1 is equal to a4 over a3 now having obtained k1 from this we now need to normalize to normalize we can make a4 to be equal to 1 and then obtain a3 with a4 equal to 1 also and k2 known we can obtain a1 and of course with k3 known 
k3 being equal to a1 squared minus a2 squared plus a3 squared plus a4 squared all over 2a1 a3 we can obtain a2 as the square root of a1 squared plus a3 squared plus a4 squared minus 2a1 a3 k3 and having obtained all of these we want the result returned as a column vector again of a so this is it and then i'm going to dock this now yeah i've docked this now now I'm just going to run this script. Voila! I have my answers. So here we have our K1, K2, K3. This is K1. And of course, when we come here, you'll be able to see that. K1 is minus 0 0.0573. K2 is minus 0 0.0587. And K3 is 0 0.9986. And that gives us our A1 as minus 17.0383 a2 as 1.4156 a3 is minus 17.4539 and a4 as 1 with this, we can now, this actually represents the length of the link. Now, the negative sign does not mean that your link length is negative. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, it only means that um, your link could be to the negative side of the origin. Okay, so just take it as that. Your link is positive and of course this is coming from the fact that our k also is negative for these values so um, viewers we have now come to the end of this lecture i hope you gained a lot please um, subscribe to my channel and follow more videos thank you